Hey everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a Futuristic February 2020 review. This will be all in one day for you, but for me today is February 4th and I kind of just want to talk about my experience with Futuristic February right now and then throughout the month I'm going to be talking more about it. So I did this challenge last year. Last year was the first year I heard about it. It was brought about by Carly Bergman on Instagram. She and her significant other have a company called The Sustainable Duo and they're just really inspiring. Even if you never partake in this challenge, you should definitely follow them for some environmentalism veganism tips and tricks. So just a quick synopsis, this challenge is a trash audit and if you don't know what that is, it's basically you hold on to all of your non-perishable waste. So please don't hold on to food scraps and nasty things that's gonna attract bugs and smell. But basically all of your trash that is not gonna smell and all of your recyclables for the entire month of February. And the idea behind this is to, at the end of the month, you get to see how much waste you or you and your family produced in a month. And it is really eye-opening. You can check out this video right here to see a review from last year. I'm just gonna give you a heads up, it is cringy. That was both of our first video, talking on camera. So that's the quick version. I was really debating on whether or not we should do it this year, just because we haven't made very many changes in our life since last year. And I wish we could, but we really can't. There is so much stuff we still have to buy in plastic and just in packaging in general. I try to make as much as I can at home, like bread, tortillas, croutons, kombucha, peanut butter, butter. Okay, I guess there are a few things I make at home now than I do from last Last year but looking at it now from February 4th I don't think we're gonna produce that much less waste than we did last year and it is so disheartening for me to see everyone like I had so much trash this year and they have like a Walmart bag full of trash and I'm like people you're making me feel really terrible I guess I do have to account that we have two people in our house so it'd probably be less so it's day four and I think we're off to a pretty good start we honestly don't produce much waste other than our food because we really do have to buy most of our food in cans glass and cardboard we avoid plastic almost at all cost. The only thing we really still have to buy in plastic is like fruit and nuts. We don't have a bulk section here and that really hurts me. But I think we are shopping way more at farmers markets and I have learned to make more things at home. So fingers crossed we at least have a little bit less waste than we do last year. I think that's all I have for the intro. I'm gonna try to be better about filming since it's day four and this is the first time I've actually sat down and talked to the camera. A lot of it's probably gonna be on my phone because it's more convenient for me. So sorry if I don't always look this good. I hope you enjoy this video and our month-long recap. Be sure to stay tuned till the end so you can see how much waste we produced this month. I'll also like do a before and after photo about how much we wasted last year and how much we wasted this year. Happy Futuristic February. Happy February 2020. This is gonna be also like a, a video time capsule, beginning of the month versus end of the month. The point of this challenge is just to inspire people to use less waste. At the end of the challenge, you can look at all of the things that you have and see what can I buy in bulk? What can I buy without packaging? What can I switch to a different type of packaging? Other than plastic? What can I omit from my life completely? You could just ask yourself all of these questions. The point of this challenge is to help you reduce your waste, eliminate your waste, and even just make some simple swaps. Sure, at the end of the challenge, it does look at all your waste overall, but I think one of the most important things to look at is how much actual trash you have, things that cannot be recycled, and also how much plastic you have, and see if you can find those two items in something like cardboard, glass, or metal. Stay tuned, and I'll keep touch with you throughout the month. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should, but if you do, you probably saw my stories that I made myself a standing desk. It was like 90% upcycled. It was just four cans and some wood that we had lying around. So this got us thinking. We really want to get mochi a cat tree. We clearly don't want to buy new and I've been struggling to find one second hand. I think we're just gonna make one. We have a lot of wood left over and obviously we eat a lot of food out of cans because that's all we have here. So in the theme of futuristic February and trying to reduce what we send to landfill and to recycling, we're going to save all of our cans and use a bunch of Gorilla Glue and the leftover wood we have left still. And plenty of this fabric right here, we're going to use to cover it to make it nice for her to sit on. If you want to see a complete office declutter, you can check that out right here and you can see what I did with all this fabric as well as how I cleaned the rest of this room, which is kind of a mess right now. So yeah, that's all I wanted to get on here to say. It's day eight and I think we're doing really well. I know we're only eight days in. We've already found stuff to upcycle and like I said, we do make a lot more stuff at home than we did last year. So I think we're on a pretty good track to reduce less waste than last year. So fingers crossed that we actually do. And hopefully at the end of this challenge, we also learn some more ways that we can keep reducing our waste. So this is really sad sad our pile because it's future state february and now we have all this waste for the month just so you know this is not going to be how much waste we normally produce in an average month this is how much waste we produce this month because we did a declutter so i just realized i've been absolutely trash at remembering to kind of vlog during future state february it is the 19th so sorry about that i did kind of want to give you some of my thoughts right now as we are about two thirds through already only 10 more days left in the challenge we did this last year during the challenge as well when we traveled so I didn't actually take any of that home with me because not that it would have been a lot but 
it was just kind of a lot to keep track of so I did take photos of everything so I'll throw all the photos in at the end of this video so you can see all my waste throughout the month this is me and Dan's waste by the way so I didn't keep any of our trash from our travels and then today I had to get some some groceries because we were completely out of food and I couldn't go to a farmer's market because I work during the day and then they all sell out before I get off of work so I had to get some produce in plastic not the end of the world it's also been kind of hard because we are cat sitting right now so we've been going through like twice as much cat litter and twice as much cat food which means more waste um, we had a friend house sit for us this weekend so their waste is probably in our trash can so it's kind of hard to keep track of whose is whose sorry I've failed at vlogging throughout this month hopefully I'm better within the next 10 days only 10 more days left stay tuned and at the end of this video you will hear our final thoughts I don't know if we'll have that many final thoughts because it's the same challenge every year I guess at the end I will go through some of the ways that I have reduced my waste since last year and then some ways that we can probably keep improving moving forward stay tuned for that and stay tuned for the final trash haul hey guys this is my hair now I didn't really have anything to get on here and talk about for features in February I just wanted to throw my my fresh hairdo in the video if you have short hair and you know how to style it please leave comments down below because I've never had my hair this short I don't know why I thought it was a good idea I don't know how to style it and I kind of hate it right now but anyways for futures of February here's a whole bunch of cans I just washed I'm pretty sure I've already talked about this before but cans is our biggest downfall because we don't have a bulk section so like we really only get beans and like corn and tomatoes and pasta sauce in cans that's pretty much about it but we eat a lot of beans they do have dry ones but it's way too time consuming for me right now they come in plastic and I don't really know which would be better like shipping wise they require would require a lot of thinking so for now we just get cans and that's about it it is the 25th only four more days left of future say February and then I will show you our final haul while I was thinking about it today is we still have two days left of future stick February but while I was thinking about it I'm making my own flatbreads well it's not a traditional flatbread because I don't have time to do the yeast and it's not quite a tortilla it's my own combination but all I do is like one and a half cups of a combination of all-purpose and whole wheat flour a little salt a little garlic and some water just until it forms a nice dough split it into four pieces and then that's what we use for wraps and stuff instead of buying like tortillas or flatbreads in plastic I started making my own bread last year after future stick February so I've, I haven't even bought a tortilla or any sort of wrap in over a year now we don't eat bread that often anyways like we don't do sandwiches or anything but we do love wraps and we love like enchiladas and other types of tortilla stuff hey everyone it is March 1st and future stick February is officially over this year and here's all the things that we had so like I mentioned earlier in this video earlier in this month we are using a lot of our cans to actually make a cat tree for mochi a lot of our cans aren't going to be considered waste this month which is really good for us because we eat a lot of food out of cans. I will show you a picture of actually all the cans that we have saved to make the cat tree. But other than that, we did have a few aluminum items, parts from cans of nuts. We've got the tops of all of those cans, of course, and then a few sodas and drinks that we bought here and there. Not very much aluminum this year. We also did not have that much glass. We had three things of juice that we love to buy, these really lovely glasses. We also have red curry paste, a sauce from our favorite curry restaurant here in Japan, some ginger, other things like molasses and salsa. I guess we don't have to buy the juice. I buy the juice to flavor the kombucha so I guess we could use fruit but it is just so much easier for us to use juice and then same for plastic we did not have that much plastic we had an orange juice that we had used up that we bought way before February also a thing of parmesan that we bought like literally when we moved into this house like a year and a half ago and that was the last dairy item that we had in our house that Dan finished off this month other plastic included just other things that I finished up this month like some spices some paints I also bought this chocolate soap that I talked about on my Instagram but I think that making that demand for vegan products is a bit more more important at the moment than reducing your plastic consumption and I'm not saying I buy like a whole bunch of vegan items just to increase the demand I don't mind buying vegan items that come in plastic to increase the demand that's what I'm trying to get at so those are our three lowest ones this year was plastic metal and glass except for the metal that we're going to use to repurpose which I encourage you to do too if you don't have to throw something away you can find another use for it please do that instead and now on to our biggest offenders this year just like last year I think we had a lot of paper because our oats our nuts Dan also did a big declutter so I think our, our cardboard consumption would have been a lot less had he not done that declutter this month but we had to get rid of it at some point always have a lot of paper and then for trash our biggest offender there was definitely farmers market stuff and that is because I have just come to realize the fact that it is way more beneficial to buy something that was grown locally but comes in plastic than something that does not come pack packaged in plastic that had to be shipped from America like definitely both have their con I think the the pro of it being grown here 
in Okinawa or in Japan definitely outweighs the shipping of shipping it from America. That's a whole other topic I'd like to talk about someday. Other random trash things are just random pieces of plastic, like we have to buy our berries and nuts in plastic because we don't have bulk, so a lot of those was in our trash. Other things like twist ties from our greens, other little bits here and there, and like I always say at the end of my videos, and you can check out this one right here, why I believe that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run, you can see how even your small negative impacts also have a big impact in the long run. And what I mean is that day by day, if you followed me on my Instagram stories, I posted my trash every single day, and every single day was only like anywhere from like three to six items per day, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you have, if you when you have three items every day for 30 days, 29 days I guess, that's 90 items. Even just reducing one item a day will cut back to 60 items. You can really see how even just our small daily amount of trash really adds up to this big bag of trash that we have at the end of the month that cannot be recycled or used in any other way other than going to the landfill, which is really sad. And a big part about that too was Dan's declutter. He did end up throwing a lot of stuff away just because it didn't have any other use and couldn't be recycled. I think we actually did a lot better than we did last year. I started making all of our breads at home, flatbreads, tortillas, any bread that we do consume, which isn't very much. I also make peanut butter at home now, veggie broth at home now. Those two were big hitters last year. We went through so much peanut butter and veggie broth. It was insane. So I'm glad I started making those things at home. What else do I make at home? Kombucha. I mean, we didn't buy kombucha before, but now that we buy kombucha, we don't feel the need to buy like other juices and drinks and stuff. We just use the kombucha in place of that. I also think since this year was our first year being completely vegan, that helps a lot too, because we bought a lot of cheese, which comes in plastic, a lot of meat, which comes in plastic, a lot of eggs, which can come in cardboard. But like by eliminating those three things, I think we've actually reduced our waste a lot. Moving forward, I honestly don't know what else we can do right now to reduce our waste because everything that we buy we buy intentionally. We try to buy the least wasteful thing as possible in cans, cardboard, or glass, or unpackaged if possible. But like, we don't have a bulk section here, so we can't get most things people would get in bulk, like oats and nuts and beans and noodles. We still have to buy all of that packaged. And it really sucks, but that's just our situation right now. And I think that's part of what this challenge is, and part of what I'm trying to do is spread awareness that you can still live a low waste sustainable lifestyle without having access to a bulk bin or a Trader Joe's or a garden or anything. We don't have access to any of that, and we still manage to live pretty sustainably. I was pretty proud of our accumulated trash this month. We only had one full bag of trash, one full bag of paper, a half a bag of metal, half a bag of glass, half a bag of plastic. So really not that much. I think we did really well. I think there are a few things we can do moving forward, like try not to impulse buy as much, try not to buy a chocolate milk when I want a chocolate milk. I don't know. I could probably make one at home or something. I think that's something we can do. Another big thing about living zero waste is that you shouldn't have to change your life. No one's perfect when it comes to zero waste and you should still be able to live comfortably. So I'm trying to accept that for myself as well. Like I still need these things to live so if I have to buy them in packaging that's okay and then a few other things like I kind of want this do I really really want it right now is it worth it kind of thing we do treat ourselves every now and then we get ice cream we get chocolate milk we get sodas happy end of future six February I hope that you were inspired by this educated by this and I hope that you'd participate next year if you're interested be sure to follow Carly Bergman and her boyfriend Brendan on Instagram I'll leave all of their channels linked down below they also have a business they're the founders for this movement and they have a lot of educational materials on their Instagram they also have a YouTube channel let me know down below if you participated and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to check out my Instagram and my blog and remember until next time that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Because my hair is usually all gross when I come home from work so sorry if I'm not always. I hope this month is better than January. Holy crap. January was a rough one for us. So sorry about March, Mar Marchies. I'm so sorry about Mochi's and yamming. Uh, that's a whole never, a whole never. Three items every day. Every day. Thanks, Dan.